During the press conference in which Prosecutor General Martha Imalwa explained why she was unable to account for 600 million Namibian dollars that apparently vanished into thin air, she also spoke about the ODC case, where 100 million also just vanished. We all know I have been on numerous occasions going into the media being interviewed and I put my position clear what was going on. From the beginning I said there is a matter under investigations in Namibia carried out by members of the Namibian police. There is an investigation going on in South Africa carried out by the investigators in South Africa. Investigations revealed that the, that was the companies which came to make representations to ODC are South African companies owned by South African citizens. Even when investigations in this country completed, and in South Africa it was also completed, we shared the information. But we faced the challenges. The lower court decided that fiat is extraditable. For who was the co-perpetrator with Fiat, was above 80 years, and he was in ill health. And then I said, let us agree on here. Let Fiat be prosecuted in South Africa jointly with us. Then, because the majority of witnesses were in South Africa. When the matter went to court, Fauri <coughs> decided to plead guilty. And because South Africa has a, a, a pre bargain scheme in place, governed by the law, we could not dictate that, no, we don't want pre bargain now comes to Fiat, whom we wanted to extradite. Fiat then challenged the decision of the magistrate. He appealed to the Supreme Court and he actually requested make representations to the Minister of Justice in South Africa, alleging that our prisons don't meet the human rights standards. And he too was above 70. And he was also not in health good, I mean good health. Now we were now considering him going to the Supreme Court. If he lost, he's going to, to the Constitutional Court. And our witnesses, Fauri, who can testify against his co-perpetrator, could not even be sent to Namibia by air because he's sick. I don't know whether he's still alive or he's dead. Now, we all know that the law provides for documentary evidence to be kept for five years, unless there is an ongoing investigation and a request has been communicated for the keeping of such information. We all know that. Now, some of those challenges that due to the period of time lapse, 
from the time the loans were applied for and granted and subsequent investigations started. Most documentary evidence could not be located. Thirdly, some of the relevant people who could have shed some light on some of matters have since been deceased.